So far I'd say I'd like the Siri watch face the most. It's definitely one of the new things is in settings. It's very much like an actual iPhone now. Hello folks, welcome to NetCruiser Tech. It's time to put something techy back on this wrist. The Apple Watch Series 3 just got a huge discount. I picked one up. Uh, smartwatches kind of have come and gone in my life. I, uh, back in the, whenever iPods were still a thing, this was what I considered to be kind of my first smartwatch. This is a iPod Nano from when they made this Square Nano generation. And uh, it was a pretty terrible watch. It was never designed to be a watch, but people joked about it being one. And then aftermarket companies made these uh, type of bands. So I would recharge it. I'm sure it still works, but um, anyway, not sure why I keep this around. Old iPod. It actually looked not too bad as a watch. It's pretty big though, kind of chunky. Then a couple of years ago, the Moto 360, one of the nicest looking Android Wear watches at the time with the circular interface. A really nice watch actually, I really enjoyed this thing, but uh, I would imagine that by now almost every Moto 360 in existence is dead as this one is. Battery expanded, it cracks the back. And essentially what happens with these is all the batteries failed. They did try and get it to work. Uh, it uses the induction charging stand. It will actually still boot up and turn on, but it gets about two minutes of battery life before it fails. Almost 360 degree LCD display. It only worked really well with Android. And now I do keep an Android phone around for running utilities and apps and devices that require Android, but my daily driver is an iPhone and I run an iPhone 8. And while this thing is just booting up and doing nothing, I'm just gonna have that back in the background. But what's happened recently with Apple Watches is we're on their sixth generation, I believe. Started with series zero, one, two, three, four, and now just recently the generation five has been announced. Generation five includes a new always on display and every Apple Watch has always been OLED. So that's pretty cool. Since generation five came out, the Apple Watch series three just got a huge discount. I picked one up. These are now down to $199 US brand new. That is an amazing price for an OLED Apple Watch for the basic GPS functionality. Now I'm in Canada and my local Best Buy actually had an open box. So I bought this from bestbuy.ca online and this is considered an open box discounted product. You like getting discounts on pretty much everything that I buy. I do try and find discount codes and, and stuff like that. So I decided to pull the trigger on this. I got this for just over $200 Canadian. So for the same price as what you're buying, paying for a new one in US, I got this one uh, in Canadian money. Let's see how well Best Buy repackages their Apple watches. I did get the 38 millimeter in space gray with a sport band black. Now the reason why I went for 38 millimeter is because this is the last generation of the 38 and 42 millimeter watches. The new ones are 40 millimeter and 44 millimeter. I do not like having a big large watch. This watch was too big. It looked ridiculous. Even the Moto 360 was a pretty big watch. It's doing some weird update stuff in the background here. Look at this. It's trying to, it's trying to work, but as soon as I take it off the charger, it's gonna die. Anyway, this Apple Watch, 38 millimeter. I know that eventually I'm going to upgrade this to a 40 millimeter. Series five is gonna cost in Canadian dollars over $600 for a watch. For a smartwatch, something that's probably gonna last you a year or two uh, before either the battery fails or it's obsolete, I'm not really uh, on board with. So I figured $200, that's really a, a sweet spot. I'm excited to try out my first Apple Watch and see what the experience is like. So far, things seem to be in pretty good condition. Got the charger here. This is the, it is a Qi charger. As far as I know, it's not gonna be compatible with standard Qi chargers like this Moto 360 is running or my phones are charging up top on Qi pads. Uh, I'm gonna try, but I don't think they'll work. All right, good job Best Buy. They gave me the opposite side of the band in case it doesn't fit my wrist. You got all the paperwork here. This is a pretty good experience so far. It's just like having a brand new one. And here's the watch. Let's see if it's in pristine condition. It looks to be very clean, like it's never been worn or it was cleaned extremely well. I don't see any immediate scratches on the face. This is a 38 millimeter. A lot of people think this is the girl size, but let me tell you, 
the 42 and the 44 millimeters are really big. I think that that is an appropriately sized watch for my wrist and I really don't want to have anything bigger than that. I think that that's a really good size. This is the smallest one they make uh, and I always thought that that was pretty good looking. All right, so the small medium band does fit on my wrist in the very last hole and uh, if I do want to change it, I can, but for now, for the initial setup, that actually seems, ah, uh, it's a little tight. I will put on the, the other band. Power it on and see if it's got a charge. So far so good at boots. Buying open box has been no downside at all. I've saved over $70 and uh, got a pretty brand new looking watch, Series 3. We're gonna get it booted up, paired to my iPhone, do some software updates. I'm gonna try and get it onto Apple Watch OS 6, I guess, and uh, we'll see what it's like. Now, considering that this charger and band look like they've never been under the package and still has the plastic on it, I'd say that this is pretty much as brand new of an open box experience as you can get. I don't imagine that whoever returned it would have spent the time to feed this wire around the cardboard like this. I'm pretty sure that, uh, that they didn't use it. I've got a low battery indicator on the watch, so I'm going to charge it and I'll come back when I'm ready to set it up. Before I charge it, I think I am going to swap out the band. This side of the band is a small, and uh, the one really cool thing about Apple Watches is it's kind of a gateway to bands and band styles. And for all the people on the street that I see with Apple Watches, I'm always surprised by how many people just have the stock band on it. To me, having this quick kind of slip out type band system is one of the coolest things in that you can change the style however often you want. One of the things I did do was I ordered on Amazon a bunch of, of different bands. So I already got this blue leather with orange accent. I've got one of the uh, type of Nike style vented bands and then at Canada Computers they had this on clearance for four dollars. It's very similar uh, black band but it has some metallic ends on it so I wanted to see if that looks nicer or not. So I've got three bands to try and I've got more on the way because buying bands on eBay or on Amazon are extremely cheap for Apple watches. You can get these for under 10 bucks, $70 at the Apple store. It's crazy. I always thought that this long packaging on the Apple watches was a little bit ridiculous. What does it matter that you're going to have the band curled? You're always going to wear it on your wrist curled anyway. So why does it have to ship flat? I never understood that. That's for a company that's trying to reduce packaging, this is excessive packaging for, for a little watch. Charger, ready to charge. Is it, is it magnetic? Oh, it is magnetic. So it does, cool. It is a magnetic charge. Now that I've got power going into it, it says bring your iPhone close. So I will do that. Bring your iPhone close to your Apple Watch. Wow, that worked amazing. That's one of the nice things about Apple devices is just how well they work together. So we're gonna say continue and do the setup. My iPhone is still on iOS 12. I have not upgraded it to iOS 13 yet. Here we go, we use the camera to sync up with the watch. We're already new, ready to upgrade it to the new version of software. So we're gonna say update now and updating the Apple Watch. This takes a few minutes. I'm not entirely sure if watchOS and iOS are completely separate. Update the software on your Apple Watch. First, you need to update the software on your phone. Updating my watch to iOS 6 is going to require me to update my phone to iOS 13. So we will do that too. It's going to force me to do it. I have to download two gigabytes and I'm going to update my phone to iOS 13.1.2. I have to wait for my phone to update first, but here's the black sport loop band, large sized on a male hand, 38 millimeter. I think that's a great size. I'm approximately a 180 millimeter wrist. While I'm waiting for my phone to update, I thought, well, we'll try some other bands. The Amazon bands that I got. This one is the AI Genius silicone breathable size, 38, 40 millimeter black and red. You can get this in all kinds of different colors, but I thought that the black with the red looked pretty cool. So we will give this a try. Interestingly enough, this one has a double clasp instead of the single of the original. See how the original one has the one little nipple on it and this one has two. Okay, this is the Nike styled black and red. It's more of a exercise band, but if I pair this with a red and black face, it'll probably look pretty cool. You can get this in all kinds of different colors if you wanted different colors. It's definitely a more sporty look. Anyway, for uh, for 10 bucks, you completely change the look of your watch. Okay. 
Next up is a genuine leather watch band. Keys Jeff strap for Apple Watch bands, 83011, 38mm, 40mm blue. They say these are genuine leather and I did, get, did give them a sniff test. They're a little stiff. They will soften up over use over time, I'm sure. And there's many of these that you can choose from. I chose this one because I liked how it was styled. A wider uh, buckle clasp, as well as the black metal clamp and clasp. Let's put this on, see how it looks. Oh, that's stiff. Yeah, that side was a lot looser. Ooh, yeah, that's nice. I dig it. Let's put this on. And that's a more traditional looking watch. Ooh, actually, I, I think I like that a lot. Like, yeah, I got to tighten it up. One more hole. Leather watch for 10 bucks. And this is, that's a pretty, in my opinion, a pretty classy look. Okay, let's take this one off and try on the Aurora Colorful Sport Strap. Colorful, but unfortunately the only color they had was black, so I had to get the black one. Four bucks. And here is the black with a silver or chrome clasp on it. It actually doesn't look bad at all from well, as far as I can tell right now. Ooh, it's really small. It's the same as a small size of the others, so it barely fits my wrist but it actually does ever so slightly class it up a little bit it seems a little bit sleeker than the stock just by having those two little chrome rings on there just makes it a little bit extra not bad for four bucks it does kind of pivot on the wrist a little bit nicer it's hard to see but it gives it an extra pivot point on here and here versus the stock ones the whole thing has to flex Thought you might also be interested to know that you cannot charge your Apple Watch in any kind of other Qi based charger. So this is the Moto 360 stand. It will not charge the watch. It's a normal uh, Qi stand and no, you get no charge activity at all. You have to use the official one. They have made something special about it. Put it down there and away it goes actually reset the pairing because iOS 13, the update crashed on my phone. I didn't have enough space to install it. I would have to re-download it all again. I just decided to exit out the pairing, set it up as if it was going to be uh, watchOS 5, iOS 12, and now I'm going through the setup. So it wants me to set up my activities. Google, what's 220 pounds in kilograms? 220 pounds is equal to 99.79 kilograms. It's been a while since I updated my weight. I have lost a lot of weight. Recently, I've been doing keto since February and I've lost over 50 pounds. Cool thing is even with uh, Series 3 watch, it can still detect irregular heartbeat rhythms and higher low beat notifications, which is awesome. You don't need to have a Series 4 or Series 5 to do that. A Series 4 Series 5 adds the uh, electrocardiogram where you can add your finger onto the digital crown and you can actually give yourself an ECG. This one, it'll still detect irregular heartbeat, which is fine. And I do appreciate that because I'm 40 years old. I'm excited to have something that monitors my heart health constantly. Also, you can use Apple Pay and unlock. I should be able to unlock my MacBook Pro with this watch as well. Something else the Apple Watch can do is emergency. So you can press and keep holding the side button for emergency services. When your watch is connected to your phone, it'll automatically call uh, 911 for you. So that's pretty cool. And install all available apps or choose later. Some apps on your iPhone may also work with Apple Watch. Um, I'm going to say fine. Yeah, everything. Let's, let's give everything and we'll see what I get. I have no idea. Cool. Now it's going to sync all the apps. While it's syncing, you can learn how to use your Apple Watch. So there's a tutorial here that shows you how to use the display. Tap to select, swipe and scroll to move. So you tap to select, swipe and scroll, press firmly. So it does have the 3D touch, which they got rid of on the new phones. So you can, it detects how hard you're pressing on the screen. That's pretty cool. Digital crown. How's the digital crown work? You press it to return home and you can press and hold to talk to Siri. There was more. Turn to scroll, zoom and adjust. Side button. Press to show the dock. Double click for Apple Pay. Press and hold for medical ID and SOS and power down. Okay. And that's it. That's the tutorial. We just have to wait for this ring to fill. It's got a notification. Uh, iMessages are now being routed to the watch. And now we're ready. Press the digital crown. That's the default watch face. Here's all the things you can do. 
adjust your settings, see the face gallery, check out the App Store. When I do the update to watchOS 6, the App Store will then become available on the watch itself. You won't need your phone to do it. Well, what faces do we have available? So you get all these breathe, fire, water ones that do not look that great on the older generation because they left them to be circles instead of filling the full screen unless you built the pride. Pride uses the full square, that's interesting. You got three different activity watch faces. Astronomy. I'm hoping there's a weather one. I do really want some weather complications. Color, fire, water, kaleidoscope liquid metal, Mickey Mouse, modular. Here we go. Luckily these modular ones would let me get the information that I want to have. So you can have the date, the middle is weather, bottom is breathing. Okay, we're gonna try this one. Um, might wanna change the colors though. I kinda liked it with the, where you have you get multiple colors. I'm gonna add this one. You can customize them on the watch later. And here's some of the fancy motion ones that you can get. Numerals. You can have your own photos on there. Pride watch faces. Simple. Simply right now, just to add a couple of watch faces. Siri watch face. We'll try that one out as well. Solar time. Sure, try that one. Time lapses. Ooh, neat. And we'll add a utility watch face, sure. Vapor, extra large. That's it. All right, I'm gonna keep playing around with it. Put it on my wrist and ask for a passcode. It is locked right now, but uh, yeah, I have to give it a passcode. And then I think it registers to my biometrics so that it locks for me. So, and then if I want to change the watch face, I can just do it this way right on the watch. That is pretty cool. Let's check out the heart rate stuff. Heart rate shows your current heart rate. If uh, your heart rate is high or low for more than 10 minutes, you can adjust or turn off these notifications. I'm going to turn on those notifications. That's something that I definitely want. So just as I'm trying to shoot this video, I'm at 80 beats per minute. It'll just calc it'll just get data throughout the day, I guess. Pretty cool. Oh yeah, and you're supposed to use the digital crown instead of instead of swiping. It's nicer to use the crown so you're not covering up the screen. So I'll let that keep going. How do I get back home? Okay, and this one's the breathe app. Kind of a relaxation app. And then the center complication is the activity rings. Addictive things about Apple Watches is you're always trying to close your rings. So you've got things for the standing. It's going to tell me to stand up for at least one minute every hour, uh, how much I'm moving, as well as how much I'm exercising. I try to complete these stuff every day. Now it's going to start tracking me. I do like this. Oh, that's how you do it. Okay. What you get by adding the apps gives you additional uh, complication information. Pretty neat. So far, I'd say I'd like the Siri watch face the most. It gives you the most information right now and coming up as you scroll down versus all of the other watch faces are fairly static where you get whatever you've set up out of your up to four complications, but that's it. They're otherwise fixed. Here's all the watch faces that I've set up or that are available, lots of them. This is still on watch OS 5 and my iPhone needs to be updated in order to get watch OS 6. All right, I'm on the final stages of setting up iOS 13 so I can update the watch. The things that watch OS 6 is going to add is cycle tracking, uh, loud noise activity tracking, uh, atrial fibrillation alerts, and a couple of other uh, uh, monitoring health activities. So we're gonna update that now. My update to iOS 13 is complete. So open the watch. I should be able to now update the watch. Here's watchOS 6.0.1. It's a 710 megabyte download. Finally installing. WatchOS 6 update is now complete. Let's see what's new. Definitely one of the new things is in settings. It's very much like an actual iPhone now where you can control a lot of stuff directly on the watch now. There's also a new calculator, which we've never had before. That's pretty awesome. 
as well as, I believe this is the new sound meter one. Nope, now playing, what is this? Uh, this is the new icon, who knows what we're playing, but there's a new media player. In order to play back media from your Apple Watch, you do need to connect to Bluetooth headphones, so that's where uh, AirPods come off really handy or any other type of Bluetooth headphone. There are two new watch faces, Numerals Duo and Numerals Mono, so you can get a big uh, big type font. There seem to be some extra things in the settings that I didn't notice before, like you control your app layout displayed, as well as under Siri, I'm noticing something here that voice feedback is always on, so that if you mute your watch, you can still always get voice feedback and control the volume of Siri's voice. Uh, I'm looking for the ability to check for loud environment. There is a way to protect your hearing with the new Apple Watch. I'm not sure if the Series 3 supports it, so it is. it was a feature of Watch OS 6. I'm checking to see if it's in here. There's also a new voice memo app that I do not recall seeing on the older software. There's now voice memos, which allows you to record things and save them to your iPhone. Okay, in heart health, I found where you set up the irregular uh, rhythm notification. So there's heart health rate notifications. You do need uh, iOS 13 and watchOS 6 to make this work, it seems. Set up a regular rhythm notifications. So I'll fill out the information, get it set up. Apple Watch will occasionally look at your heartbeat and check for a regular rhythm. Apple Watch cannot detect heart attacks. Apple Watch is not constantly looking for AFib. All right, there we go. Notification for AFib is on. And then when you jump back to the heart app, the rhythm is on, high heart rate, you can set it for 120. This is default, but you can adjust it if I need to later. And yeah, we're all set for that. I'm still having trouble finding the new noise app, and that's really all I'm looking for next. But inside of the privacy settings, there's headphone audio measurements, which says that it's gonna determine measurement levels when you have Bluetooth headphones connected, and there's an option to include other devices. Sure, turn it on. I want to, I'm still trying to get the decibel meter. I can't find it. Notice that sometimes a good way to check for uh, settings that you can't find otherwise is to go into the customize the watch face and to scroll through a complications. Uh, things like wind, weather, rainfall, those seem new. Uh, we didn't have those before where you could separate out wind information and rainfall information. That's definitely new. Pretty much I can find everything except for the audio levels. All right, I've been looking for to no avail because the noise app is only available on Series 4 and newer, even though the other documentation that I found for, about the Apple Watch said that the noise app was coming to all Series 1 through uh, 5 devices. That is untrue. So you, the Series 3 does not check for loud environments. I think that's it. I mean, that's probably a pretty long video. I'm very impressed with this so far uh, in less than a day of using it. Just a couple of hours, really. Oh, also, uh, if you swipe up from the bottom, this gets you into your quick settings where you can control things like the, uh, the Wi-Fi battery level, notification level. What does this one do? Do not disturb settings. The masks is theater mode for when you go to the movies. It turns things on and off uh, for for noises. Uh, this is where you can evacuate the water. Oh, once you start it, you have to do it. Uh, flashlight mode, it just makes the screen really bright. Uh, airplane mode for when you go on a flight. Uh, this one is finding friends. This one pings your phone. Walkie-talkie mode on and off. And you can edit your quick settings uh, in there as well. You could spend hours going through this, setting up all your custom settings and software. It does a lot. Uh, it's a fitness tracker. It's a health tracker. It does a lot of different things. It's a great device. Now that you can get them for 200 bucks, I say go for it. If you've never had an Apple Watch before, Now's the time. The Series 3 seems to be great. It does almost everything that you would want. Eventually, in a couple of years, once the Series 5 drops in price, so we can get that always on display, that's a pretty trick feature because normally you just have a blank screen on your wrist the whole time unless you lift it up and then the screen turns on or you touch it. Also, you just cover it and it goes to sleep. I'm not sure how it knows that. You can do a quick tap to turn it on, but as soon as you cover it, and you have to physically touch it, it seems. It's not a light sensor, but you give it a broad touch. All right, guys, so that's Apple Watch. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you're new around here, subscribe. If you want to talk to me, leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks for watching.